So each team member in this operation has a specific responsibility. So the idea is that we will task individuals to build uh, whatever we need for the operation. So we have guys focused on explosives, weapons, different types of technology. The grenade pieces that we're building, we plug this with wax, animal paraffin, and we pack the black powder down inside. And the fuse, we can cut based upon the time. So obviously, to slow it down, we utilize cotton from the day with a little bit of wax on it. And then we boil black walnut husks to give it its black color. My job as the team leader is to be able to treat everybody equal. We work very differently in special operations. We're extremely collaborative. There is no ego or king within the group. If you're the most experienced guy in explosives, you're actually leading that part of the mission. So as far as the long gun goes, since we do have the technology, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rifle the barrel. Um, not very common in the period. However, the technology did exist and it was being done in Europe. So we're gonna go ahead and take that barrel and we're gonna rifle it. It's gonna give us a little bit more accuracy. It's also gonna give us a little bit more range. Nice. What do you think your range is gonna be for a pretty accurate shot? Accurately 200 to 250 wow. yards. That's, that's double or triple what they were even able to get back. Absolutely. Then. Of course, they had smooth bores back then mainly, um, which did not allow too much um, spin on the round or none at all. We essentially put grooves inside that barrel. Um, you'd imagine that like throwing a football, you wanna throw a nice tight spiral. Same thing with the bullet that's coming out of this barrel. What are we doing with the katanas? Okay, we've pre-forged these, uh, utilizing technology that was available elsewhere in the world. Right now, we're getting ready to put a, a, a finished edge on it, and we're covering our uh, So, back in those days, most of them utilized fencing-type swords. It was really the Japanese and the Asian countries that had mastered the steel back in those days, rolling it four, five, six hundred times. That's and right. it was truly a killing blade, much, much more effective than what they had uh, the Europeans. We're utilizing materials and technologies that were available in this time, not just from this specific um, region, but from throughout the world that were available. The most elite weapons possible for that time. All right, Hollywood, what do we got going on here? There's a challenge with the shape charge, that being that the black powder explosive is a low explosive, so it's probably not powerful enough to have the effect that we need it to. So it was pretty raw explosive back in the it day? It was a very low explosive, so there's not a lot of energy coming out once it's initiated. Not a high flash point. Now we have an option. Now they had ammonia nitrate. It was developed in the 1600s by a German. It's a high explosive, and we're gonna attach it to a time fuse. We're gonna have a charge that's moving out 20 to 30,000 feet per second, which is extremely fast. So like a high-powered rifle at 308, would be moving about 2,700 feet per second. So about one-tenth of the speed of this charge when it initiates. So um, even though we have limitations, it should still be extremely effective. The entire charge has to be waterproof. So it's I'm gonna do the interior with wax and then the exterior also. But once the charge, the time fuse, everything is yeah. assembled, we're gonna dip the entire charge. Yeah. And uh, hopefully that'll be adequate to allow us to swim it in and yeah. uh, maintain its integrity. It's a cotton fuse that uh, is with a black powder slurry inside of it. And then we wrapped that up and dipped it in the paraffin wax. So it'll be waterproof and it's gonna be slow enough that when we light it, we can set the charge and then still go and do the raid on the boat without this charge detonating prematurely. So by waterproofing this fuse with paraffin, what we're able to do is actually allow the black powder to burn down the middle of the cotton actually in the water. We're introducing something they could have done back then, but they just never thought to do. Right. What do we got, Archangel? Well, so we're trying to fashion some uh, plates here, ballistic plates to prevent guys from getting killed. Um, so we're using actually arrow wood, and then we're gonna take a metal sheet and place it over to keep the weight down and obviously help with some of the flotation because we're going to be coming from the water. The bullets as they work with in those days, this is going to stop it. Now, it wouldn't stop a modern day by any means, but because of the foot pound of pressure, the speed of those things, this is going to stop it nicely from any of us getting a kill shot. One of the important things in working a small unit is you really can't have a man go down. So we're making body armor or simulated body armor during that era to prevent any fatal injuries and, you know, really make it so that we only have to deal with secondary type wounds. It provides a lot of stopping power, but it's gonna be about an eighth of the weight. 
Well, they, they shot a lot of crap out of their blunderbusts, glass, yep. leather nails, broken wine bottles. This is definitely going to stop that. So, Odin, what do you think Blackbird would think of this? Once we get there, he's not going to have much time for anything.